everyone. This is Sunday morning at Beacon of Hope Ministries. And we are very glad that you are with us today on Facebook. And uh, the Facebook posts are going out to more and more people. We're very excited about that. So welcome to Beacon of Hope Ministries, Clearwater, Florida. I'm Pastor Marcia McAllister. And we have people in the room and we have people on Zoom. You can be a part of our Zoom audience if you're not in the Clearwater area. It's easy to uh, get on there. Just send a quick email to prayers at bohmglobal.com, and Betty will give you all the instructions on how to become a part of our Zoom audience. We start a new series today, and it's the first Sunday of the new year, and that's exciting. Hope everybody had a good New Year uh, celebration, whatever you did. Uh, today's title is Finding Where You Belong, because we're starting a new series today, and it's called Belonging. Uh, last year, we had a 45-sermon series called Forevermore. Do y'all remember that? If you haven't watched all those, you can go to our YouTube channel. It's capital letters, B-O-H-M, and then there's a space, global. B-O-H-M in caps, then space, and then little letters for global. Check it out. It's all there. I don't think this series will go that long, but you never know what God's got to do because we are going to be bringing in some of the heaven information, new stuff, all kinds of things into the series. So we never know what God's going to do. So it's okay. Whatever he does, we'll just stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll see what he's going to do. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. And... Luke wrote Acts, and Luke wrote the book of Luke. And so now he is writing this to a specific person. But as it turns out, we're still reading it 2,000 years later. So in Acts chapter 1, verse 1, the first account I made, Theophilus, was a continuous report. Luke wrote a continuous report. That's the book of Luke. We've been teaching out the book of Luke through the Christmas season. Okay? of all the things that Jesus began to do and teach. And now verse 2 of Acts chapter 1. Until the day when he ascended to heaven. We're going to talk about that. And so Jesus walked around, and it says it right here. And let's just read it, and then I'll explain it. After he had, by the Holy Spirit, given instruction to the apostles, the special messengers, whom he had chosen. We've been showing The Chosen on Wednesday nights here. What a wonderful uh, series that is. And you can download the app and cast it to your TV, or you can join us on Wednesday nights at 545. And it explains how the disciples were chosen and the fact that they, they were God's chosen people to do what he had for them to do. Verse 3 of Acts chapter 1. So these men, he also showed himself alive. Now, a lot of people don't even know that fact, that after Jesus came out of the tomb, the risen Lord, he walked around for 40 days, guys. That's a long time to walk around in your resurrected body because he had specific things he wanted to accomplish during that 40 days. And here's what he did in verse 3 of Acts chapter 1. He showed himself alive after his suffering in Gethsemane and on the cross, and by a series of many infallible proofs. So Jesus walked around for 40 days proving that he was in his resurrected body. Does everybody follow that? Mm -hmm. And unquestionable demonstrations appearing to them over a period of 40 days. Okay, And talking to them about the things concerning the kingdom of God. He didn't just rise from the dead and you know go straight to heaven. Well, we know that's another teaching of what happened during those three days. But he walked around and he appeared in his resurrected body. And here's what happened. Verse 4, while being together and eating with them. Okay? I told you we're going to start bringing some of the heaven stuff into this series. Guess what? In your resurrected body, you will be eating. You say, really? Why do I need to eat in my resurrected body? Jesus ate in his resurrected body, guys. There are scriptures that say, uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 11 is one of them, that we are going to be eating with Abraham 
Isaac and Jacob in heaven. We're not just going to be existing, guys. We're not going to be floating around. We talked about that a lot last year in the heaven series. We're not going to float around on cloud, right? We are going to actually have our resurrected bodies, okay? And so Jesus walked and he talked, he ate, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, of which he said, you have heard me speak. Because Jesus, as he taught, this was in his original body, before his resurrected body, he talked a lot about what was going to happen when the Holy Spirit came upon the, the disciples and all the, all the believers, okay? And so he says, by the way, don't you remember I talked to you about that, okay? Verse 5, for John baptized with water, because that's what John the Baptist did, yeah. right? And that was for the remission of sin, but you will be baptized, this is what Jesus is saying to these disciples, and empowered, okay, baptized and empowered, giving power. I don't know about y'all, but I think we all need some power. Yes. Okay? And in this series, you're going to realize how important that kind of power is, this kind of spiritual power. And united, united, okay? When we talk about the word belonging, well, I'm going to amplify on that in just a minute. But I find it fascinating here in the Amplified Bible that he says, Jesus says, you're going to be baptized, you're going to be empowered, and you're going to be united. Okay? Or united. That has everything to do with the word belonging. Think about that. Okay? With the Holy Spirit not long from now. So when they had come together, they asked him repeatedly. I can just picture the disciples and these people in the upper room that were praying and all that. They're asking him questions. Well, what do, you, what, what do you mean, you know? And so here's one of the questions they ask him in verse 6 of Acts 1. Are you, is this the time that you're going to reestablish the kingdom and restore it to Israel? In other words, are you going to get us out from under the Roman Empire? That's what they wanted to know. They wanted to know if politically they were going to be taken away from that Roman Empire domination, you know? You see that a lot in shows that you understand how serious that was. That they lived under that. And that's one of the questions they kept asking. Are we going to do that? Are we going to get free from that? And Jesus says in verse 7, so like him, it's not for you to know the times or epochs which the Father is fixed by his own authority. How many times do we say, God, when's that going to happen? Right? When is this going to happen? When, when are you coming back, Lord? What, when? Right? And, and we want to know that. And people write books about it. Years ago, when I had the chick or the Christian books tour in Indiana, there, that was 1988. There was a most popular book in my store for a while, 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming Back in 1988. I don't know if you checked lately, but this is 2022. I couldn't keep the book on the shelf. People were coming in. But the sad part of what happened is that people were buying it, and then they were changing their lives drastically. And I had people come in and ask for prayer because they had maxed out their credit cards. Wow. And they had done all kinds of things because Jesus was coming. This was in 1989 they started coming in and asking for prayer. Why? Because Jesus didn't come back in 88. So this has been a question people have asked for a long time, right? We want to come in back, Jesus. Well, you know what? He's not going to tell us that. There's a lot of signs. We a lot of us believe it'll be soon, but we don't know for a fact. Can't tell you it's going to be Tuesday at 9 a.m. Can't tell you that. Acts 1, verse 8. But here's what's going to happen with you will receive power and ability. Woo! When? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay? So Jesus is saying, here's what's about to happen, folks. You're going to be different than what you were, like you walked with me for three years. He's telling them, things are going to change because you are going to be filled with the Spirit of God on the inside of you, and it's going to change you. And for those of you in our audience that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, have been filled with the Holy Spirit, didn't your life change drastically? Mine did, clear back in 1979. Ooh. You will be my witnesses. Here's what you're going to be able to do. You're going to be my witnesses to tell people about me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Here's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing something, people. They were like, what's going to happen? You're going. Jesus, where are you going? Talk to us, you know? And he says, oh, you got a work to do. 
You know, you're staying here. And for as long as we're still here on this earth, guys, we have a long, we have a lot of work to do. Okay. We are not meant to just be, you know, sitting around doing nothing and just playing games on our phones. Guys, that's not what we were meant to be. We are to be his ambassadors and his messengers. And we are to belong to someone and something. Hmm. Let's talk about that in a minute. Look at verse 9. After he said these things, he was caught up as they looked on. Now, this has got, this is mind-blowing. He's standing there talking to them. They're asking him, hey, what's this happening? What's going to happen? You know, are the Roman, is the Roman Empire going to be done with and all of this? And he's standing there talking to him. He's out on a, a hill or a mountain or something. And a huge bunch of clouds come around. And look what happens. Mm -hmm. As they looked on, a cloud took him up out of their sight. Whoa, that had to blow their minds. Wait a minute, you've been walking here in your resurrected body for 40 days. You've been teaching us, you've been telling us things about the kingdom. And now you're going to leave us? Whoa. You know how it feels when somebody leaves you? Yeah. yeah. I think most of us know how it feels yeah. when somebody <laughs> dies or with, with somebody breaks up with you. Or if somebody just says, I don't want to be your friend anymore. Or one of your kids doesn't talk to you for a long period of time. That doesn't feel good, right? right? Because we want things to be, we want everybody to stay, you know, okay, everybody's all right, right? And so when Jesus suddenly begins to lift off, huh, like a rocket, really, but not that fast, I don't think. Because they were standing there watching this, and all of a sudden, they go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, where, where, where's, where did he go? And there's the cloud, and suddenly they see he's coming out of that cloud. And he's going up. You talk about mind blowing. Why did he have to ascend to the Father? He had a work to do, right? He had a finished work and he had another work to do because the word says that he sits at the right hand of the Father. Jesus does, ever making intercession for us, right? And so the cloud took him out of sight. Verse 10 While they were looking intently into the sky as he was going, two men in white clothing suddenly stood beside them. Oh, I love it when God does unusual things that nobody expected. Well, who were these people? These were angels. These were angels. Suddenly, here's Jesus going, and they're like, great sense of loss. Think about how they felt. And suddenly, two angels are there in dazzling white clothing. Now, that'll get your attention, right? That'll get your attention. And so, in verse 11, they said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into the sky? And they're going, uh, duh. Because Jesus was right here, and now he's up there. We saw him go. And the angels are going, hey, this same Jesus, what's going to happen? Who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. All right, people, let's tie that into last year's series on forevermore, right? Heaven is real, correct? And you know what? Jesus is coming back in the clouds. He's going to come back. And so we will go to be with him, and we will instantly have our resurrected bodies when he starts down from heaven, if we are still alive at that point. And we talked about that a lot last week. Let's talk about belonging, because I believe everybody wants to feel that they belong. Would y'all agree with that? Yeah. I think that when we get isolated and we feel like nobody cares about us, that it's easy to fall into a pity party. Okay? Now, these disciples had been not only walking with Jesus for three years, but they had been walking around for 40 days listening to him talk to them and teach them, right? And in his resurrected body, I mean, they were like, this is like heaven on earth, right? They're walking around with the resurrected Lord. They are a part of something. They're not exactly sure what they're a part of now. Because things have changed. He's got his resurrected body. But that moment when he goes into heaven, game change, right? right. And they might have been thinking game over, hmm. right? Because after all, here he has been walking with them, teaching them, eating with them. Take out, I'm sure, and stuff like that. And here he was, now gone. He just disappeared. 
But the angels were sent immediately on time. Did you know about God's perfect timing? We've been seeing it a lot of you can know lately. God has perfect timing. We just have to trust him. We just have to trust him. Okay? His timing is not our timing, unfortunately, but he's got a plan. And his plan is the best plan, correct? Yes. And so these angels said, Men of Galilee, why are you stand looking in the sky? And they're going, Well, the angels say, This same Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in just the same way as you watched him go into heaven. Wow, that's a tremendous promise. That is for us now, too, right? Mm -hmm. That keeps us going in our spiritual walk. Yes. You know what? This is not all there is. Okay? And we're talking about belonging because I believe in all my heart that everybody feels like they need to belong to something or someone or some situation, right? Have you ever done, gone and done something new? Like, have you ever... In your school life, think back through the years. Did you ever go to a different school? Did you ever move with your family? A lot of people don't, but I did a lot. Okay, and I remember going into, especially going into sixth grade, when now I was in San Jose, Costa Rica, in a school where everybody spoke Spanish, and I'm a little American <laughs> kid, right? You talk about not feeling like you belong. I didn't feel like I belonged. My gosh, I didn't even understand what was, what was being taught. But I found out that that's the best way to learn a new language, right? Just sit there and listen. You know, until the day that my assignment was to write a paper on how the coffee bean was um, made, or, you know, like distributed. And I'm like, uh, in Spanish? You know, it was hard. It's hard. I, I felt like I remember going home and crying. My dad and my mom had said, I can't do this. I didn't even hardly understand the assignment. I, I, I understood finally that it was pointed to me that I'm supposed to do this, but I didn't know how to do it. And fortunately, my dad came to my rescue because he was in Spanish language school and he began to help me and write this and I began. But, but for a, a brief moment, I remember feeling so alone, right? I remember that memory. Didn't feel good, right? When you're like, I can't even speak the language and I'm going to write a paper or something. Sixth grade. I mean, it wasn't a long paper, it's one page. You know, it's not like typewritten. Right? <laughs> but we've all gone through those times in our lives where we don't feel like we belong. I wrote a couple things down. I want to read them off my paper because I'll never remember exactly, right? As I wrote these, the Lord began to give people are looking to belong all the time. And then this little song came to me looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> Would y'all agree that we do? We are constantly, we want to, to feel a part of something. That's human nature. But a lot of times, we get mixed up with the wrong people. Can anybody say amen to that? Ever been mixed up with the wrong people? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. The hands are flying. The amen, yeah. We've all done that, right? Why? Because there is a a basic need in us to belong, people, to feel like we're a part of something, right? Whether that's dating somebody that we think is cute. And everybody in the office says, oh, you'll never get a date with him, and then you do, you know? And how cool is that? Oh, wow. So we look to belong. That's what we do. Second thing, <laughs> we need to belong to fill the voids in our lives, right? We, the first one was, we look, we, we, we just know human nature is we want to belong. So we get involved sometimes with wrong people, right? But the second one is different. We want to belong because we have empty places in us. We have things that we haven't worked out. We have insecurities. Can anybody say amen to that word? We have things that we are like, uh, you know, I still remember my, and, and I looked at it, a few years back, so it was still the same. My yearbook from Muncie Central High School, I won't tell you what year, and it was black and white. There were no color pictures in that back then. We didn't have that. It, color hadn't been invented, evidently. Um, and um, all of us, all the girls, if you just go through that, we all had on the same type sweater, and it was like a round neck. You know, sweater, y'all know what I'm talking about. And and this is so long ago that we all had a little circle pin. How many of you remember the circle pins? No, because you're younger than me. Okay, a circle was it was a it was like a silver pin. And we you remember them, Jim? 
Okay. Well, he's older, so uh, you know. Since 1955. No, you are in big trouble. No, it didn't say anything. It was just a round silver circle. And as I'm going through the yearbook, I'm going, oh my gosh. We all had the same sweater on, and we all had the same circle on our shirt or on our sweater, right? But that was the style, and we did that, why? So we would be along, right? So that we would feel a part, and everybody was kind of dressed the same, okay? We don't, that, um, society's changed now. We don't worry about all looking the same, do we? But back then. So we have boys in us, don't we? And we want to be accepted. That's the thing, guys. Human nature says I've got to be accepted. Okay, I've got to. I've got to know that people think I'm part of the gang, right? Okay. The third one is we try to find a resolution for our problems that we've not dealt with by latching on and belonging somewhere. You don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's where I think a lot of people get into drugs and alcohol and addictions and things because the, in, the stuff on the inside has not been dealt with, right? And so they have these things they gotta deal with, but they're not dealing with them. And so the best way to feel better about yourself if you're not gonna deal with your issues is to make sure that you're a part of something that everybody thinks you're okay, right? It's a way, belonging is a way of covering up things yeah. that we don't deal with. You say, I didn't know I was coming to a counseling session this morning, Pastor. Yeah, but that really, we got to set the tone for why it's so important that we learn how to belong in the right way. Because a lot of people belong in the wrong way, in that they're not dealing with things. That's So that's a big problem. Here's another one I wrote. But, uh, people try, the reason we have problems with belonging is people try to fit in. They fit right with their clothes they wear, perhaps their speech. Have you ever known somebody that never seemed to swear or anything like that? And then they start hanging out with a certain group of people and suddenly F-bombs are flying and everything else because they're trying to belong, right? right? And so they do it by their speech. So guys, a lot of times we get caught in the devil's traps because we want to belong so bad that we are going to compromise things that maybe we never would have said before or behavior that maybe we never would have done. But because there is such a deep need to belong, we get in trouble. Can anybody agree with that? Yes, true. So I, I believe that. And the other thing we do, and I wrote this down, number five, is that we look for people who think like we do, okay? Politically, I'm not going to talk about politics. We don't do that in this church at all. But politically, people do that. They hang out a lot of times with people who believe exactly like they do, right? Because it makes them feel better about who they are, okay? So our whole quest as humans is that we are constantly trying to belong. That's my opinion. I believe it with all my heart. And so what it does is it opens the door for all kinds of other problems. So let's talk about positive things and let's go back to Philippians. So we've set the stage for why it's important that we understand this whole concept of belonging. Let's go back to Philippians. And we're going to see a little bit about what happened to these disciples as they began to changed their lives in so many ways after Jesus went back to heaven. Let's go to Philippians chapter 1. Because their whole goal in life was following Jesus. For how long? Uh, Paul. Paul. Okay. Their whole goal was just to follow Jesus, to just be right there and, and listen and make sure they were. And then Jesus leaves. And suddenly they're on their own. And that happens to humans, doesn't it? Yeah. People leave. Sometimes we break up. Sometimes it's a divorce. Sometimes it's a job switch and you don't know anybody in the new job, right? So these things happen and we have to learn to adjust. Or adapt. Yeah, we got to adapt, okay? So let's go to Philippians 1 because what happens is, and we're going to talk about this some in the book of Acts, the disciples were told in Acts chapter 1 to do what? Do you remember what they were told to do? Jesus said, I want you to wait here. 
I want you to wait. Okay, and they had to wait in that upper room for 10 days. Now, they didn't know how many days they were going to have to wait. But they waited 10 days. And what did they do during that time as they were waiting? God was preparing them to really belong. You say, what? What do you mean he was preparing them? If you spend 10 days in a in a place where you are praying and praying and praising God, and you are, if you're just in concentrated revival, you ever been to a revival that went on for weeks? Yeah. Hey, some of the greatest movements of spiritual movements in this country happened and were born out of people you know, finding their way into a revival and then they went back the next night and they went back the next night and pretty soon they're saved and then and then they're filled with the Holy Spirit and then they're going, I gotta have more of the word and then they keep going and that revival changes their life because they broke the pattern of business as usual. If we're going to really learn the keys to belonging, we've got to be willing to break the habit of everything's got to be the way I think it should always be. Because one thing I've learned with God all these years is the more I seek him, the differenter, is that a word? The more different things become. Okay? You know why? When Jesus went to heaven, he left them there and he said, here's what you're going to do. He didn't say, you're going to start a church, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. He didn't give them specific instructions, guys. What he did was he said, you're going to go pray. You're going to go pray. And this is going to change your life. And you're going to do it with all those people in the upper room. Do you know how many people were in the upper room? 120. That's a significant number. Because in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, when they were dedicating the temple and they began, the priests, they began to worship God and there were 120 of them. Same number. And what happened? The glory of God, as they began to worship God, the glory of God fell down on those priests. And suddenly there was, I mean, it was heaven broke loose. Okay? Guys, here's the first step now. We, we presented the problem. Now we're going to start talking about the answer. The answer starts with exactly what Jesus said to the disciples. This is my opinion, okay? I didn't get this out of any book. I got it from the Holy Spirit. That this is how we become more sure of where we belong. Step one is we devote ourselves to prayer. Colossians says, it, Colossians 4, 2, I believe it says. I'm just going to go there. This God's reminding me of that verse. It is. It's Colossians 4, 2. Be persistent and devoted to prayer. Be alert and focused in your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. Oh, I don't preach, and I didn't have that down. I wanted to talk about that verse. That is right on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's what he does as we're teaching. Colossians 4, 2 says this. I'm going to say it again in the Amplified Bible. Be persistent and devoted to prayer. We're devoted to prayer around here. Okay, we have a prayer line. We've had an email prayer ministry for, I don't know, 13 years or so. But now we have the Facebook app, and, and God began to speak to me the last couple days because we started in April, and he said, go through your contacts and start inviting more people to that app. We are now at 65, 68 people on the Beacon Prayer app. Why is that important? Because we can put right there on Facebook the needs and people, they, oh, they come in the needs and then the praise reports are there. Right. And what does that do when you put your need and then you get your answer? What does that do to your faith? Ooh. It increases your faith, right? So listen to Colossians 4 to be persistent and devoted to prayer. What did Jesus, what's his parting instructions? Go pray. Just go pray. Okay, just wait. Pray and wait. Pray and wait. Well, a lot of us don't like praying and wait is the answer to our problems, right? We don't want to be told, yeah, oh, okay, here's what you got to do. Pray and then wait. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not a good waiter. At least I didn't used to be. I'm, the older I get, I think I'm getting better at it because I'm learning some lessons as I wait that God's answer is better than mine every single time. And if I will wait, I'll get the right answer for the situation instead of rushing. You know what I'm talking about? I'm one of these A-type personalities, but you never guessed that, right? And I like to get something done. I got a list that's on my desk, and I want to get it done, and I'm going to sit there, and I'm going to do it. Sometimes doing that list in the order I have is not the order God wants to have. You know what I'm talking about? Be persistent and devoted to prayer. 
being alert and focused in your prayer life. Focused. Focused. Here's what we do so often. We get off out of focus. Have you ever, uh, well, we have cameras around here right now. We have cameras, and they were focused before we started this service, right? Why? I would think that our Zoom audience on that camera up there on the wall would have been yelling a little while ago if everything was out of focus, wouldn't they? They'd be going, oh, wait a minute, it's your own blessing. Right? We don't want to look at things that are out of focus. But we as humans have a hard time staying focused. Can anybody say amen? Yes. amen. This has a lot to do with belonging. I'm not off track, so listen. Colossians 4 2. Be persistent and devoted to prayer, being alert and focused in your prayer life with an attitude of thanksgiving. So, how do you learn to belong? And this is a part, this is part of the whole process. You get your priorities right, guys. You get your priorities right. Hey, this goes right along with this being the first Sunday of January 2022. What do we need to do? We need to take a look at our priorities, we need to get them into focus. Correct? Yes. We got to decide what's important here and we got to go with that. So let's go to Philippians chapter 1. Paul and Timothy. Paul wrote this. They were bond servants of Christ Jesus the Messiah, the anointed, to all the saints. Now, neither of these guys were disciples. See, because the church had already begun to grow. Okay? From that moment when Jesus went to heaven and he commissioned them all to go and pray and wait. And from that moment on, what began to happen? All kinds of things. Miracles began to happen, right, in Acts. And so part of that is here, Paul and Timothy. They were not the original disciples. They weren't part of that, but they were an outgrowth. So what happens as you begin to focus, as you begin to let go of those things that you want to make you feel that you belong start changing your priorities in this new year to a life where you're reading the word where you're studying when you are praying mm -mm. and they say verse 2 of Philippians 1 grace to you and peace inner calm and spiritual well-being from God our Father what are they praying for this Philippians we want you to have peace you know what when you begin to feel that you belong to God and to people around you that you're accountable, that you feel like you're part of something, you get peaceful. It's when we are stressing ourselves that we don't belong, that we're, we're something's wrong with us, something we just, just don't belong, right? We're not a part of. Grace to you and peace and spiritual well-being. I thank my God in every remembrance of you. Now, wait a minute. He's writing. Paul and Timothy are writing to the Philippians, and he's saying, I thank God for you all the time. Do you thank God for people around you that are part of your circle of life? We talked about the circle of life a lot last year in the Forevermore series, and it comes into play now in the Belonging series. Because who are you going to hang out with in heaven? Total strangers? Who are you going to hang out with? Believers. You're going to hang out with not unbelievers, but you're also going to hang out with people you know. You're going to see relatives, right? When people are dying, we never say to them, when you get to heaven, I hope you meet 150,000 new, new friends. <laughs> do we do that? No, we say, you're going to see your mama. You're going to see your daddy, right? You're going to see people that you know. You're going to see people that you've loved here. Here's another ingredient, um, and we're going to amplify on these in the first in the next couple of weeks. But we're just giving give you an overview. When you feel that you belong, you feel loved. Would y'all agree? Yeah. We're going to talk more about that. You feel that people like you mm -hmm. when you feel that you belong, right? You may have a lot of quirks. You may have a lot of strange things about you, but, <laughs> but you can't help it. That's right. But you know what? I know God made you that way. No, I have nothing to do. <laughs> oh, my. There's nine comments going on in the room here. But you know what? When you begin to understand that you belong, don't you feel good about it? Don't you feel like, hey, I'm. I'm not, I'm not unlikable after all. I mean, people do look forward. Miss G walked in today and we were all going, Miss G, we miss 
to last week and we're hugging her. We missed her, right? Why? Because she belongs. Yeah. Right? She belongs. When we get a handle on the fact that we need to put a priority to belong, it changes our life. We came back from Central America. I was in high school. And um, it was really hard. Mm -hmm, whatever. And um, I didn't feel like I belonged. You know why? One reason was walk down the halls of high school and everybody's talking English. It was weird for me. It was very strange for me. And I, I just felt like I was out of place. Everybody had their cliques and their friends, and I hadn't been with them all those years. Like a lot of them grew up in the same elementary, same junior high. I was just a stranger, you know? And I remember going home and telling my parents, I don't belong here. Can you get me a plane ticket back to Guatemala? Wow. No, no, not right now. You're just going to have to adjust. I don't want to adjust. I would go home at night and I would cry. I'm not kidding you. In high school, and second part of my sophomore year, and I would cry and say, I don't like it here. I know we have to be here for a period of time, but I don't like it and I don't belong. And some of you remember the story. My dad was preaching a revival in the hometown church where they, my parents had gotten married. And he I don't even remember what he was preaching, but I know that all through that sermon, God was saying, you got to deal with your attitude. I'm 16, 17, 16. You got to deal with your attitude. Well, I didn't want to deal with my attitude because I felt justified. I was unhappy. I was miserable being in the United States, right? I didn't have friends. It was weird for me. At the end of that sermon, God said, go to the altar. I need to talk to you. Oh, so, you know, and I did. I went and I can still visualize right now where on that altar at that church that I knelt down and I began to cry. And God says, I've got something for you to do. This is part of the plan for your life. No, God, this is miserable. I am miserable. I don't like the United States. I want to go back to my friends. I want to go where I belong. I, I had quite a case there. And he said, I have something for you to do. And I said, I have something for me to do too. <laughs> That's how my attitude was really bad. I'm just admitting it right now. And I said, I'm going to be the best doctor for you I can be because that's all I wanted to be since I was seven years old. I wanted to be a missionary doctor. I wanted to, to be a medical doctor. That's what I wanted. And I said, I'll be a, a great doctor for you. And he goes, nah, no, that's not it. And so I'm like, seriously, you bring me back to the United States and now you're telling me I'm not going to well, I'm going to do it anyway. It was my attitude. But you know what? That was my attitude. It was. And I said, I am so miserable. And so I'm going to change your heart right now. Guys, this was a huge encounter with the Lord God at that altar. I am weeping. I mean, people in church are like, and the, you know, dad's praying with different people at the altar. And he looks at me and he just realizes I'm doing kingdom business. Evidently, he's left me alone. And I am just praying and crying out and saying, God, I don't belong here. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. This is my plan. Calling you to the ministry. Oh, no, no. I grew up in the ministry. No, 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 no. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be the best doctor for you I can be. So eventually I got up from that altar. Next day, I went to school, Marion High School, Marion, Indiana. And I was in a class with uh, a health class, I think we had back then in those days. Yeah. And, um, and God said, talk to us, these people sitting around you. We had a break, and everybody was just supposed to talk, and they were all in their little cliques. And I, he said, go over there and talk to that one. Uh, really? And I will tell you guys that in the next few weeks, I started obeying what the God said, and I led four or five people to the Lord. And I'm 16 years old. And I'm like, oh, but that doesn't matter, God. I'm still on track to be a doctor, right? How'd that work for you? Yeah, it didn't, it didn't work out. That's later on in the story. But, but, you know, the point is, we think we know what's going to make us belong. 
Okay? And the disciples thought they wanted the Roman Empire gone, and they wanted Israel to be political, and they had a political agenda. And that was not what God had for the disciples. He said, you're going to be missionaries. That sounds familiar. You're going to be missionaries. That's what you're going to do. You're going to go with the gospel. And that's where we are here. And we're going to wrap it up with this. I thank my God in every remembrance of you, always offering every prayer of mine with joy and with specific requests for you all. That is what we're called to do. As we start this new year, guys, we are supposed to pray specifically for people. That's one way that you learn to belong. You get involved with people and you start praying for them. Join our Beacon uh, prayer group on Facebook. And um, I'll send a... Huh? You finally did, yes. Uh, just send an email to prayers at bohmglobal.com and say, I want to join that prayer group, and then I'll friend you and all that. Because why? Because when we get involved with specific requests for people, then we see God answer prayers, guys. Right. Yeah, that's right. He answers them. Yeah, that's right. Oh, and then look at verse 5 and 6, and then I'll wrap this up. Thanking God for your participation and partnership. So and when you begin the process of wanting to belong, you got to participate. Mm -hmm. That's what God was saying to me that night at the altar. you got to get involved. you got to start making friends. So what? You don't have friends. Well, what are you going to do about it? Start talking to them. One thing led to another. Suddenly I've had friends, right? He says, for comforting fellowship, contributions, mm -hmm. but it's verse 6. I want to get to Philippians 1.6. Paul says this, I'm convinced and confident of this very thing. Convinced and confident. Here it is. That he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. Guess what? You're not a lost cause, audience. If you feel that you don't belong, hang in there. Because God who began a good work in you, Philippians 1.6, will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. I have bellyached and bellyached about where I was at age 16 and a half. God, God was like, mm, whatever. Here's what I want you to do. And step by step, I began praying for people. And it began to change my life. It caused me to be why I'm here right this moment. Because I changed my attitude and decided I want to belong. I want to make friends. I want to pray for people. And I started praying for people. That's what Paul says right here. Start doing the prayer work needed. If you don't hear anything else today, hear this. If you really want to belong, you got to learn to pray. This isn't a, a sermon on prayer. This is a sermon on belonging, you think, right? No, belonging means we have a common goal. We're going to talk more about that next week. A common purpose, okay? And our purpose is to touch as many lives as we can with the gospel. That's what our purpose is here at Beacon of Hope. Our slogan has been forever since we began 20 years ago, where the word of God brings healing and restoration to hurting lives, right? That's our goal. The missionaries, the, the disciples that went out from that day when Jesus went up in the in the clouds, they, some of them were martyred, a lot of them were, for the gospel, because they actually lived what they believed. Yes. I don't know about you, but I want to encourage more people to belong. That's why we've been doing this prayer, what, for a whole year, 104 times, it's number 105, right here. Last year, God said, I want you to do the prayer of salvation every Sunday, and Every Sunday afternoon on our radio show. I didn't know when that was going to end, but it never ended. And he said, we're still not done with that. You know why? Because there are people who don't belong to the kingdom of God right now. that are out there in Facebook land, maybe people you know, and they need to have prayers prayed over them that they will find their need for a Savior. Right? People here in the room, people on Zoom, would you agree with us right now? I'm going to pray the prayer. Pastor Jim will repeat every phrase. If you audience member are not sure that you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe at some point you talk to God a little bit, but you never really made that commitment. You don't really belong to him. 
You're just kind of on the fringes watching what these crazy religious people did, right? God wants you to belong to the family. God wants you to belong to the family. Okay? There's a chorus we used to sing a long time ago at Beacon. We're the family of God. And that chorus, I'll, I'll try to write those words down for everybody. It's really good. That's what God wants for you. He wants you to be a part of the family. Okay? He wants you to belong. So pray this prayer with us right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. I want to belong to your family. I want to belong to your family. And I don't think I am. I don't think I am right now. Yes. And so I choose to believe. So I choose to believe. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that God sent Jesus to this earth. I believe that God sent Jesus to this earth to teach us about the Father. To teach us about the Father. To die on a cross. To die on a cross. For our sins and our sicknesses. For our sins and our sicknesses. And to be raised from the dead. And to be raised from the dead. I believe that you can forgive me now, Lord. I believe that you can forgive me now, Lord. For all of my sins. And all of my sins. And all of the things that I've done that were not pleasing to you. And all of the things I've done that were not pleasing to you. I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. Come and live on the inside of me. Come and live on the inside of me. Change me. Change me. Cause me to be more like you. Cause me to be more like you. From this moment on. From this moment on. I belong to the family of God. I belong to the family of God. This I pray. This I pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise God. So, if you prayed that prayer, guidance, we would we would encourage you to start reading the book of John in the New Testament. It's life-changing. It's all about Jesus and what he did. and It'll change your life for sure. And join us for this series because we're going to get into some nitty-gritty things about belonging and what that means and how it changes your life. Because it will. So we encourage you to share these posts or tell friends, whatever. We want to reach as many people as possible with God's good news of the gospel. And that we can belong. And that God has a purpose for each of us. So check out our YouTube channel. It's new this year. It's got a lot of stuff on it. Pastor Jim has a lot of teachings on it. We have our healing series on it from Wednesday night interactive Bible study. We have the whole Forevermore series and our Christmas series that we just did. So just go to capital letters, B-O-H-M, space, global. Those are little letters on global, and you'll find it all there. Tell friends about it, and God bless you, and have a great week, and we'll see you next week for part two of Belonging.